Hi friends, I'm Katie and welcome back to Phoenix Jewelry for another wire wrapping tutorial. So this is where we left off. I don't know if you guys remember in my last video, I was telling you guys I was chasing the sun. So filming was very difficult and so I had to do it on, do the second half of the video on day two. So this is day two and here's where we left off. As you can tell, my coils are different lengths, but I'm going to fix that uh, later on in the video, so stay tuned for that part. But I just want to show you guys what we've accomplished so far. Now I'm going to start pulling my wires towards the back of the pendant so I can create that design feature um, in the front part. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these wires back. And this is the two, this is the back wire and the front wire. And in retrospect, I wish I would have done the bail on the two front wires and left the middle wires and the back wires to work with because it, I think it would have been a little bit easier. You'll see me throughout this video um, make a lot of adjustments and I try to speed through all of that so you don't have to like sit through it. But right now I'm just bending the, the wires back and I'm going to use my bail to form the circle to bend them back forward. And so here you'll see me use my bail as that guide. I actually want to overlap the bail just enough so you can see it through that coiled wire that I'm working on right now. So I just want it to overlap just a little bit um, across that. And also one of the things just you know, working on this pendant that I noticed is that I would have ma also made my bail a little bit wider. Um, there's only two wires with a tutu weave wrapped around it. And so if I'm trying to put four wires onto, you know, to curve over that bail, they end up just looking, um, or it just ends up being a little bit harder to work with. And I think a larger bail would have helped to kind of have them sit in a nice um, uniformed way and I actually did a pendant kind of like this and my bill was bigger and it worked out a little bit better if I can insert some pictures I will for you guys but as I said in retrospect I would have made my bill much larger or much wider so I can accommodate four wires coming across it and sitting um, nice and neat and uniformed. So I'm just going to go ahead and start curving my wires over the bail and off to the side of the pendant. Thank you. 
so now that I still have a chance, I'm going to go ahead and add the coils that I need to lengthen the, the coils on this wire on the left side. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my 26 gauge wire and I'm going to start like as we did in the first part of this video, I'm going to start at the end, I'm going to start at the end of this wire and wrap around a few times. And I think I only did like 15 to 20, well, single wraps around this to get to the length that I needed. And as you can see, I sped that up just because I, it's something I've shown you guys and a single wrap I'm super confident that you, ha you guys have uh, down already. So now I'm just going to work on the left side of the pendant and take my time and curve those wires off to the side. So here's another thing I would have done differently. Instead of just doing the single weaves on these two inner wires, I would have at the end right there connected all four wires and maybe connected them back to the frame so they stayed in position. You'll see as I go along, right now I'm going to wrap the two wires towards the back and then back into the inside of the frame. And I have a lot of trouble because the wires keep moving around and if it was attached to the frame then I would be able to get a, a nicer and cleaner curve on the wires and they wouldn't be moving around and getting out of place as they are now. You'll see me adjust so many times and I think that would have been helpful if I were to uh, attach those four wires back to the frame. So now I'm going to use my pliers and I'm just going to use them to help me guide the wires towards the back of the frame and up and through where the gemstone will sit. And this just helps me get um, a nicer like curve around the wires. If I try to force the wires around the frame, 
it's not only going to bend the wires out of frame but it's definitely going to lift the wires up from off of the bale so i'm just using my thumb to hold it in place and then using it to use them the pliers to bend the wires towards the back If you're working with longer wires in any of your projects, using my pliers like I'm doing here to kind of help guide the wire around any other wire or gemstone or anything like that definitely helps rather than holding it at the end of the wire and trying to pull it through that hole that I'm um, using my pliers to guide it through. It definitely helps with a better control and it helps to keep the wires um, right next to each other as well. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now that I have my wires in the position that I want them, I'm going to go ahead and cut my wires a little bit shorter to help with manageability and getting them around the frame just one more time. I'm going to go ahead and just tuck them away eventually so you'll see that in a little bit.
Throughout this part of the process, I'm doing a couple things that I want to highlight. I'm not only trying to get these wires to lay flat inside of the frame, I'm also trying to make sure the three wires that make up the side of the frame are staying on top of each other as well. And I hope I wish I would have um, given like a little better close up here, but you'll see what I mean. When we wrapped the bottom part here with the little weave, we try to keep all three wires on top of each other. And throughout this entire process, it's imperative that we, we do that and keep that form because it is also going to help us secure the stone, the, the moonstone later. So here I'm just trying to curve the wires around and inside the pendant or inside the frame, but I'm also making sure that I'm keeping the wires uh, for the frame flat and next to each other or on top of each other.
So after making all those adjustments and fiddling with the pendant or the frame for so long, I'm going to go back and insert the stone and then create that additional security with the side wires of the frame. So to create that additional security that I spoke of earlier, I'm using my pliers and this is the back of the frame. I'm putting it close to that weaving pattern at the bottom and I'm just turning my wrist inside while holding the frame with my index finger. And you'll see me do that here again. I'm just going to hold it between my thumb and my index finger and I'm going to push in with my wrist. So I'm going to turn my wrist toward myself and those two back wires bent in like that will add some security with the stone so it doesn't fall out the back i'm going to do the same thing on the front side just so we have the same feature and the same security And there you have it guys, this awesome, sparkly, wintry moon pendant. I'm so happy and grateful and thankfully for you guys for sticking around, for watching my videos, for all of your support, for voting on what stone I should wrap and always engaging with my content. I really appreciate your support. 
and thank you guys so much don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up leave me a comment don't forget to have a great day and take care of yourselves see you in the next one guys bye